Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? So this is it, the end. The last lecture of college algebra. Very good. So, uh, just to remind you of the way things are going to close out, is that we have an exam, final exam, on Thursday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And if you don't like that time slot a lot, then you can send your love letters to the registrar, who is the group that made that decision, not me. Uh, fine. So we were going to have quiz 13 this week, but due to more or less technical difficulties, we didn't have quiz 13 this week. Uh, so today-ish, probably today, I'll post quizzes 13, 14, and 15. That is to say, you're not going to, they're not for credit, but you should, you should look at them and be familiar with the questions. The keys will be posted as well and all of that. And I'll post, post some written homework exercises as well. And then <clears throat> you should be familiar with all of that because that will constitute the mandatory part of the final exam. And then the, the optional redo portion will be quizzes 8 through 12 inclusive. Okay, any questions about that? Exciting times. So I'll be in my office next week a lot, and I'll be happy to see you there. Um, if you're having trouble finding me or you just want to be really sure that I'm going to be there, send me an email, and then we'll make sure that we meet each other. Okay. So last time <coughs> we were talking about mm, solving exponential equations and we came to the following kind of example. So 3 to 4x minus 5 equal 27. I could say I want you to solve this and I want you to compare this to 3 to 4x minus 5 equal to some other number like um, you know a hundred. <coughs> Okay, so as it turns out, the, the equation on the left is actually pretty easy. It's pretty easy to do because it's amenable to a cute trick, which is the following observation. That the, the problem that we need to overcome is that there are variables in the exponent, and we really need them to not be in the exponent. And the left-hand side is written in exponential base 3, and presently, the right-hand side is written in exponential base 27, construing this as 27 to exponent 1. Well, can we write 27 in exponential base 3? 3 to 3, right? Because 3 cubed is 27. So this is 3 to 4x minus 5 equal to 3 to 3. So the reason why that's a useful observation is because now that the bases are the same, that means that the exponents themselves must be the same. So as a result of that, 4x minus 5 is equal to 3, and then here's an equation that you could have solved, I suspect, before you even got to college algebra. You just uh, add 5 to both sides, divide by 4, and the answer is 2. So that's a cute little trick that we did there. <coughs> what about the equation on the right? It's not going to work, right? <laughs> it's not going to work. Because 100 is not easily expressible as a power of 3. It is. It's 3 to something or other. But I, I suspect that off the top of your head, you're not really sure what it is. <laughs> and uh, neither am I, for that matter. Uh, so what we need is we need a tool that allows us, in the end, what the whole point of this trick was to get the variables out of the exponent. That's the whole point. So what we need is a general purpose tool that says that if we ever find ourselves in this situation, even if the right-hand side is not nice, 
we can still get the variables out of the exponents. That's the tool that we need. So here is the name of that tool. So let a be positive, not 1, and constant. Which is to say, let a be uh, a legitimate base for an exponential function. Then we're going to plot this exponential function. Every exponential function, when you input 0, what is the output? So like what's, for example, 10 to 0? 1. So the input, input 0 yields output 1, which is to say that every exponential goes through that point, 1, 0. Uh, sorry, 0, 1. And then if this is a growing exponential as opposed to a decaying one, then it will look like this. That's a to x. Now, con considering that red uh, function there, is this function one to one? That is to say, does it pass the horizontal line test? So does it? Mm, yep. All these have zero down here, zero intersections. All of these have one intersection. So this function is 1 to 1, and therefore it's invertible, which means that we can find the compositional inverse of the exponential function. Well, visually, how do you plot the, the, comp the compositional inverse of a function? How do you achieve that? That's something we went over. It's something that's going to be on the exam. <laughs> how do you do that? It's a certain reflection. It's this reflection. Not, not, not a vertical one, not a horizontal one, but the one across y is x. So, remember that algebraically that's transposing coordinates. So where does this point 0, 1 go to? 1, 0. So it goes to here. 1, 0. And then... So that blue thing that I drew there, you can look at it like this, and you can see, oh yeah, it's symmetric. Nice. Okay, so that blue thing is itself a function. And the name of this function is the logarithm base A of x. Okay, so what I'm saying is that we're, we've now defined what a logarithm is we, by observing that the exponential function is in fact invertible, so it has a compositional inverse, and the name of that comp its compositional inverse looks like that, and we're going to call that logarithm. So I personally wish it wasn't called logarithm because that sounds kind of scary or weird or something, but that's just a completely historical phenomenon, right? This one is called exponential, that one is called logarithm. I, I wish they had better names. They don't. So some consequences of this is that what is the logarithm base, base A of 1? You input 1 into any logarithm, what is the output? Zero. That is to say, it has the inverse behavior of exponentials. For exponentials, if you input a zero, 
what's the output? 1. So going the other way, if you input a 1, out comes a 0. Okay. Now, furthermore, they're inverse functions, which means that when you compose them, you get the identity. So, the logarithm base a of the exponential base a of x is what? It's x. Because <laughs> this is saying altogether a fancy way to say, okay, I want you to take that x to exponential base a. And after you've done that, I want you to compute the logarithm base a of the result. Which is altogether a fancy way to say, take that x and do nothing. Just, just, just hand it right back to me. It would be like if you had a machine that loudly and noisily converted a cat into a giraffe, right? And then you had, a, you had an inverse machine which converted giraffes into cats, and then you put them one, <laughs> you know, you wired them outputs to inputs, and then you just put a big box around it, and then cat goes in on one side, and you hear a lot of meow and all kinds of stuff, and then saws and hammers, and then what comes out on the other side? A cat. Like no <laughs> nothing happened, right? Okay, you could also do it in the other order, which is to say a to logarithm base a of x, like so, and what is this? Also x. This would now be the same machine except you, you wired the, the machines in the opposite order so that you could put giraffes in one side, hear a bunch of noises, and then a giraffe would come out on the other side unchanged. Okay, <clears throat> very good. Now, from our point of view, the main thing that we're going to do with logs is we're going to solve equations like this. So this is the upshot of all of this from the point of view of equations. If y is a to x, If we have an equation that looks like this, and we want to solve for x, well, I have a question for you. What if, so I'm going to write something right here in a moment. But what if I pause that for a moment and I say, what about this equation? Y is uh, mx. And I said, here's an equation, and what I really want you to do is I want you to solve for x. How could you solve for x? Divide by m. So this would become y over m is x. So notice that sort of what I want you to see about this is that the m still exists, but in ch and what it did is change sides. And it went from multiplication on the right-hand side to the opposite of, the, of that division on the left-hand side. So the m moved and became its opposite. Another instance of this would be something like, well, what about this equation? Y is x to n. Now what if I want you to solve for x? Now instead of a multiplier moving sides, I want this exponent to move sides. I want the n to go to the other side. So how do you write, that is to say, I want the right hand side to be x without the n, so the n has to change sides. What is, how is it represented on the left? Yeah, as a radical. So move, getting the n to switch sides, it, it changes from being an exponent to being a radical. So multiplying is the opposite of division. 
exponents are the opposites of radicals. What I'm saying is that now I want to move this a to the other side. And I want to leave the x there. Then what's the left-hand side? It is the logarithm base a of y. So it's exponential base a on the right-hand side. It is logarithm base a on the left-hand side. Now let's see how this works when you're using it. So to rewrite those equations that we wrote at the top of the previous page, and we'll compare this to So when, when we did this on the previous page, we used that cute trick that said, ah, but 27 is actually 3 cubed. Nice. Okay, now we're not going to do that. Now, rather, we're going to use logs. What I want you to do is show me what would happen. How do I get it to look like this? 4x minus 5 is equal to what? Mm -hmm. log base 3 of 27 because that is exponential base 3 moving to the other side and becoming its opposite logarithm base 3 and now that looks like a strange thing but ignore the strangeness for a moment and just cover it up from here supposing I just have some number under there how would you solve for x Add 5 and then divide by 4. That is the answer. Now, on the previous page, we, we had written this, this thing a, a little nicer looking. And the answer was 2 on the previous page. So evidently, this crazy looking thing is actually just an extravagant way to write 2. So that's what, <laughs> this is equal to 2 for some reason. It's not clear yet. But we'll get to that in a moment. But, bef but before we get to the reason why this must be equal to 2, would you please solve this equation in exactly the same way? which is to say the thing that we need to overcome is that we have variables in the exponent. <coughs> so how do we get them out of the exponent? By moving the exponential base to the other side. The base will still be the same, but it won't be exponential. What will it be? Logarithm. So logarithm base 3 of 100. And then now, do you observe that, ignoring the fact that that looks weird, it's just some number. From here, you add 5 and then divide it all by 4. So do you observe that with logarithms, whatever they are, that 
it, they allow us to solve these equations. It doesn't matter what kind of crazy number I put here, right? I could put pi here. I could put uh, 13, 14 <laughs> here. That would work just fine. But then you might object and say, yeah, but I'd really like to know about how big that number is. Like, you know, is it, is it like 3.8 or what? How big is it? Okay. Well, let's figure out how we, how you can nu find a numerical approximation of this. Okay. <clears throat> so in order to get there, to figure out how to numerically do it. Uh, th in the first place, there is something, you know, this equation is in base three, but for various reasons, certain bases are picked out as being special. So when you use the natural number base, and by the way, what is the, what is the, how do we denote the natural number? E, right? <laughs> and then that's that number that we talked about, and it's about 2.718 blah, blah, blah. So when you're dealing in, in base E, and you have y is e to x, and therefore the log base E of y is x, just moving it from exponential base E to logarithm base E, just like we have so many times already. Logarithm base E shows up so often that it has its own special name. It is called the natural logarithm, and it is denoted as ln. ln of y is x. And you'll no and you observe that your calculator <coughs> has a button called ln. And it is, in fact, the same as this one that we're talking about. It's the natural logarithm. OK. <clears throat> so almost es essentially without exception, when you're talking to a mathematician and they're saying logarithm, they mean this. They mean the natural logarithm. Now, when you're talking to a scientist that's not really a mathematician, uh, and they say logarithm, they almost, without, without exception, are not talking about the natural logarithm. They're talking about natural logarithm in the base that we all count in. So what base do we count in? 10, right? By the way, why do we count in base 10? Is 10 special? I mean, is there some, is there, so it's, it's literally true to, t to say that there is, there is cosmic significance, mathematical significance about the natural number and about pi and other things. They're features of the universe. What about 10? Is 10 significant? <laughs> it is not. Then why do we count in base 10? Because we have 10 fingers. That's the only reason. If, if, if the, the, the history could be replayed and if it were to so happen that we had eight fingers. I guarantee we would count in base eight. I just guarantee it. Okay, so when you're in base 10, then it looks like y is 10 to x. And then moving this to the other side, well, that's log base 10 of y is x. But because humans have 10 fingers and we all count in base 10, the occurrence of log base 10 is so common that it too has its own special name, and it's just written log. Which is to say that when you see log and the base is not explicitly written, then it is understood to be 10. Now there's one more case that I'll mention out loud but not, not bother to write. And that is that, so this is when you say log, uh, and you're talking to a mathematician, this is what is going on. When you say log and you're talking to a scientist, like a chemist, then they're talking about this. So for example, pH is something you've surely heard of. pH is calculated 
in and amongst logarithms, and it's in base 10. But when you're talking to a computer scientist and you say logarithm, they're talking about something else. When, when computer scientists say logarithm, what are they talking about? So I think we can all agree that computer scientists um, have got a thing for computers, right? I think that's, that's not too, um, <laughs> it's not too um, controversial to say that. Uh, and then all, all computers these days are all implemented on silicon using transistors and how many, and you know, the conceptual idea of what a transistor is, is a bit. Well, how many states can a bit have? Two, right? Zero and one, on and off. So when you're talking to a computer scientist and they say log, they're talking about log base two. That's what they're talking about. Now, if it so happened that tomorrow some friendly 12-fingered aliens came to visit us, I guarantee that they would be counting in base 12. So, you know, you might say, then how are we going to, how are we going to work this out, right? Even, even on Earth, we have got three different bases <laughs> that we like dealing with. Uh, then maybe aliens do something else altogether. In any case, all logarithms log base A of X are defined in terms of the natural one in the following way. It is the log, the natural log of X, divided by the natural log of A. And so what I'm telling you is that because this is, is the case, that means that we could talk to, that, that means that mathematicians can talk to scientists who each in turn can talk to computer scientists. And we, supposing we found some 12-fingered friends, then we could talk to them as well. So, if we wanted to compute the log base 3 of 27 using the natural log button on our calculators, then what could we, how could we do it on our calculator? Well, that would be the natural log of 27 divided by the natural log of 3. And then what is that? When you type it in there. So natural log of 27 divided by natural log of 3. That is 3. <clears throat> okay. That also means that you could calculate this now, right? So would you please calculate this? <clears throat> to several places. So please calculate this. Well, on my calculator, the way I'm going to type it in just a moment is ln of 100, like so, divide ln of 3, add 5, close parentheses, divide by 4. So I'm going to type that into my calculator. get two point two nine seven nine five dot 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 interesting <coughs> any questions about this okay so 
even if it was log base 12, we would just, instead of divide by, log ba by natural log of 3, we'd be dividing by natural log of 12. Okay. So, now, let's, let's calculate some logs not using a calculator. Okay, because you have two log buttons on your calculator. You've got the natural one, and you've got, you can barely see it on the camera there, uh, that's log base 10. So you've got log base 10 and log base E. And it may amuse you to, to learn the following, that you surely have learned of Google, right? as in the internet search company. And they spell their name G-O-O-G-L-E. But that's actually a misspelling. <laughs> because, because they were trying to spell a number, the name of a number, that is one with a hundred zeros behind it. It's a, just, it's a really big number. And the number Google spelled in that way. <laughs> the number Google is uh, one with one, two, three, dot, 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 100 zeros behind it. It's 100 zeros. So it's got a hundred zeros behind it, and let's think. I want you to appreciate just how big that number is. So, you know, we live in a in a universe, okay? And then you can look out with a telescope, and then through various measures of stars and supernovae and things like this, you can you can establish that okay, we can see fourteen or so billion years in in all directions which means that the diameter of the universe that, that we can see is about 28 billion light years. That's big, right? It's a lot. How many protons are in the universe? A lot. <laughs> I, it is a lot. So think of all the stars and all the everything. Everything. There's 10 to the 80 protons. 10 to the 80 is, is, a pro, is the right order of magnitude. That means, that means that a Google is you take the number of protons in the universe and then you multiply it by 10 20 more times. <laughs> it's a big number. Okay, the difference between $1 and a $1 billion is, a, is nine zeros. Okay, so we're talking about billions of billions of hundreds, right? Because 9 plus 9 plus 2 is 20. <laughs> Lots. So let's compute the log of a Google. The log of a Google. Let's see if we can compute it. Well, this would be x, right? It's some x that we want to figure out. Uh, how could we write this? How could we write an equivalent equation that's not in logarithm, but it's in exponential form? That is to say, I want to, I want to get the log on the other side. It's 10, right? Because this, because the base is not specified, that means that that's log base 10, and then of Google, like so. So then to get the log on the other side, it becomes exponential on the other side. So that would be 10 to x, like so. And then, well, how do you write? Is it possible to write Google as 10 to something? Yeah, what is it? It's 10 to 100. So 10 to 100 is 10 to x. So what's x? 10, uh, 100. <coughs> so 
So I'd like for you to appreciate what this is saying. Google is a big number. It's, a, it's really big. But the logarithm of it is 100. <laughs> and 100 is, well, it's less big, <laughs> right? OK, how about, <clears throat> how about uh, let's compute the log base 2 of 1 over 64. <clears throat> Well, let's do it with our calculator in the first place. How could you do this with your calculator? <clears throat> well, that'd be natural log of 1 over 64 divided by natural log of 2, right? And you could type that in. And if you were to do just that, what do you get? Anybody do it? Negative six. <clears throat> but now how can we get this without a calculator? <clears throat> well, log base two of one over 64, I don't know what that is, let's call it x. Now how could you write this equation instead of in logarithmic form, in exponential form? That is to say, how do you get the logarithm base 2 on the other side? Mm -hmm. So it'll be 1 over 64 is exponential base 2 of x. <clears throat> but isn't 64 a power of 2? It is. How do you write 64 as a power of 2? 2 to 6. But then, supposing we wanted to write the left-hand side as a power of 2 and not 1 over a power of 2. That is to say, how can I get that 2 to 6 to move up? What's the cost of moving it up to negate that exponent? So 2 to negative 6 is 2 to x, 2 to x. Ah, but this is the same trick that we did on the, on the first page, right? <clears throat> so now we have negative 6 is x, just like the calculator said. <clears throat> So you can do these things without calculators, but it's sort of weird because we're going back to, in order to deal with logarithms, we're going back to exponentials. Wouldn't it be nice if we had some way to navigate logarithms without going back to exponentials? It'd be nice if we had some way to move around in logarithm space instead of in exponential space. Okay. Well, this is how you do it. <clears throat> so, in the second week of, of college algebra, ancient history now, we talked about rules of arithmetic and exponents. So here are three rules from the second week of college algebra. <coughs> One of them is this, a to x multiplied by a to y. So I wrote that product in red. So when the bases are the same, what can you do with the exponents when you're doing product? What can you do? Well, like for example, x say say like x squared multiplied by x to five. You add them, right? So that is to say that this becomes a with new exponent x <coughs> plus y. <coughs> so I'm I'm writing the thing in red because I want you to see that product becomes sum. The red product becomes the red sum. Similarly, from the second week, a to x divide by a to y is what? Yes, a with new exponent x 
minus y. So the division becomes subtraction. Product becomes sum, division becomes subtraction. And then the last rule that I'll single out is this one. <clears throat> a to x to y. So that's iterated exponents. How do you combine them into a single exponent? <coughs> to x, y. Now, these are the ways that you navigate with exponents, more or less. Then, corresponding to each one of these rules is a rule for logarithms. The corresponding rule for logarithms for that one is the following. The logarithm base a of x product y. Just like this one, product will become sum. Product will become sum. And just like this one, it's going to move uh, position. So this is inside, outside of the exponents. So now it's going to be inside, outside, but in the other order. So it will be like logarithm base a of x plus logarithm base a of y. <clears throat> OK. So logarithm base a of x divide by y. So what will this one do? Yeah. The operator, the arithmetic thing, is going to sneak outside. And sneaking outside, it's going to change from division to subtraction. logarithm base a of x minus logarithm base a of y. <clears throat> so notice that the operation product sneaks outside. And at, when it sneaks outside, it becomes sum. Division sneaks outside and becomes subtraction. Finally, <clears throat> the logarithm base a of x to y. This one's a little, little harder to, to see. So what's happening here is you have this x to y becomes a product. And again, we'll get product here. And what will happen is that y will I'll <laughs> anthropomorphize it like this and say the y is able to sneak <coughs> outside and when it sneaks outside it becomes y multiplied by log base a of x <clears throat> so these are the three rule three rules that you know from grade school really and then we talked about them at the beginning of college algebra these are this these are the corresponding rules in logarithms so <clears throat> for example i could ask well, what is the log of, mm, say, 10,000? What will this be? <clears throat> so what I'm saying is I'm talking about a log of 1 with four zeros. It's going to be 4, right? Because didn't we more or less do that on the previous page with log of 1 with 100 zeros? And the answer was 100. So log of 1 with 4 <coughs> zeros is going to be 4. And the reason why is that because this, because this is um, written in this way, what is the base? 10. So this is really log base 10. And 10,000, after all, can be written as 10 to 4. And then that 4 can sneak out. 
and move to the front. So that's really 4 of log base 10 of 10. But I'm going to write that 10 as a 1 because 10 is 10 to 1. So what this is saying is I want you to take that 1 and I want you to do exponential base 10 with it and then I want you to follow it up with logarithm base 10. So that's saying I want you to take that 1 and do nothing. <laughs> so that's 4 times 1, which is 4. So let's, that's a really long explanation for a relatively simple concept. So let's do a different one. How about what is the log of um, a million? And now just tell me and just straight away what's the answer. Six. And log of a billion. Nine. <clears throat> okay. Fine. Uh, maybe one more just so we're not too um, concerned about base 10. How about log base 2 of 32? What's that? So the trick here is understanding for this is that, yeah, that you can write this in base 10, exponential base 10. But here we don't want to write 32 in base 10. We want to write 32 in base two, because that's what we're talking about. Well, what is 32 in exponential base two? It's two to five. So this is log base two of two to five. So take that five, do exponential base two, and then after you've done that, follow it up with logarithm base two. Five. <clears throat> Okay. So how about, suppose I say let, let the log of x be uh, 4.7 and let the log of y be, um, I don't know, 2.1, why not? And suppose that I ask you to calculate the log of x times y, like this. So I'm not asking you for the log of x times the log of y. I'm asking you for the log of the product. But I want you to only use this information. So since this is the first one, I'll do it and say, ah, well, isn't there a rule that deals with log of a product? There is, isn't there? That product, when it sneaks out, becomes what? Right, that product becomes sum. Which is to, which is to say that the answer is that one plus that one. What if we do it slightly more adventurously? And say, what about the logarithm of x cubed times y squared? Now what? Yes, right? Because let's, let's do it in steps. First off, here's this product. Let's, let's smuggle the product out. When it comes out of the log, it becomes what? This product becomes sum. So this is log of x cubed 
plus log of y squared. So product became sum. But then, is there anything that we can do? Ah, this 3, right? That 3 can be smuggled out. And what else? The 2. So that this is 3 log x plus 2 log y. But we know log x and log y. It, it's those up there. And so then you could calculate that. And then one more <clears throat> to illustrate the specialness of this. How about log of the square root of x over y to 4? So now what can we do? So here's an arithmetic operation, division. Can you smuggle division out? Yes, and it comes out as subtraction. So this would be log of square root x minus log of y to 4. Now, I hope that we can all agree that what can we do here? The 4 can come out. So this would be minus 4 log y. But here's something a little more subtle. I claim that we can do something with this as well. What can we do with this? Half can come out. Because radical, after all, is equivalent to what exponent? Half. Right? So this is log of x to half to do it in steps. So this would be half log x minus 4 log y. So now you could plug stuff in, half of 4.7 minus 4 of 2.1. And it's these reasons that allows you to change things. For example, division is kind of complicated, but subtraction is less complicated. Square root is kind of complicated, but multiplying by half is less complicated. <laughs> it's these reasons why logarithms are used a lot. Okay, so that's it. Have a nice weekend.